Hello everyone, welcome to another video of the course. In this video, we will be talking about the motor output equation. We will derive the output equation of the three phase induction motor. And as you know, we should uh, use the output equation to be able to calculate main dimensions of the motor right for a radial flux machine main dimensions are a stator board diameter here you can see this picture d that is the inside diameter of the stator and the stack length l right for all electric machines the first step is derivation of the output equation. So we will derive the output equation for radial flux induction machines, right? The output equation for example for switch hydraulic tanks motor, brushless DC motor, or axial flux motors are different. Okay, so the input volt ampere S in is equal to three times phase voltage times the phase current. These are RMS values, right? So I define a parameter here. You can see this parameter, gamma EMF, that is a per unit parameter, right? A unitless parameter that is equal to the ratio of the phase back EMF divided by the phase voltage, right? And as you know, the gamma EMF for motor operation is lower than one and for the generator operation is higher than one. Okay. So in this equation, if instead of the phase voltage, I use this equation and uh, I calculate the phase voltage uh, considering the value of phase back EMF and Gamma EMF, I can derive this equation. The S in is equal to three times phase back EMF divided by gamma EMF times the phase current. I defined gamma EMF here in the Excel file. You can see the value of gamma EMF, E phase divided by V phase, and I considered it equal to 0.9. Uh, right, the value of gamma EMF is a number between 0.9 and 1. So, in the first stage of the design, you can assume a number and design the motor, analyze the motor. And then you can calculate this number using the finite element software and update it again and again to iteratively reach the final design remember this electromagnetic design procedure okay so let's talk about the value of gamma emf when the value of gamma emf is close to one it means we have a low resistive drop over the stator winding right so when we have a low resistive drop it means the stator resistance is low right and when the stator resistance is low the motor is actually is a high efficiency motor right and when the value of gamma emf is around 0.9 or far from one it means that we have a high resistive drop or high reactive drop and we have a high resistance and the motor efficiency is low, right? So it depends on the value of efficiency also. If you want to design a high efficiency motor, the value of gamma EMF should be close to one. But in the case of low efficiency electric motors, 
you can reduce the value of gamma EMF. So I considered its uh, value equal to 0.9 for our current design. And let's continue the design and calculate main dimensions and compare with benchmark motors. Okay. The phase back EMF, as you know, it's equal to 4.44 times the rated supply frequency times number of effective turns per phase times the winding factor and times the pole flux, right? This equation is a well-known equation for AC machines, and this is the RMS value of induced phase voltage. In this equation, phi P is the pole flux, right? Is the total amount of the flux, magnetic flux, under one pole of the motor. And KW is the winding factor. I will explain the winding factor in the next slide. And NT phase is number of effective turns per phase, right? And the definition of the number of effective turns per phase is also explained in the next slide. This slide, right? The number of effective turns per phase is equal to number of turns per coil times number of coils per each phase divided by number of parallel paths, right? So, for example, if a number of stator slots is equal to 12 and number of phases is equal to 3, so we have some possible choices. Right, number of parallel paths could be equal to one, two, and four. Right, so we have these possible choices. And here, if I select uh, NP, number of parallel paths equal to one, I have four series coil. And as you can see here, NTC is number of turns per each coil. So Number of effective turns per phase is equal four times number of turns per each coil, right? In series uh, connection. So in this case, number of parallel paths is equal to two. And as you can see here, we have two series coil, right? In each parallel branch. So number of effective turns Per phase is total number of turns between two terminal points, this terminal point and this terminal point. And in this case, number of effective turns per phase is equal to 2 times NTC. And when number of parallel paths is equal to 4, we have this case, as you can see here. And the number of effective turns per phase is equal to number of turns per coil right so in general you can write this equation to be able to calculate number of effective turns per phase versus number of turns in each coil so what is the winding factor the winding factor is equal distribution factor times the pitch factor times the skew factor so our winding our stator winding is a distributed winding, right? You can refer to this textbook that is one of our references. In the chapter two, you can read about different winding types in electric machines, right? So the winding factor for a distributed winding is equal to this product. We have three factors, distribution factor, pitch factor, and SQ factor. Distribution factor is equal to, actually, for distributed windings, we define this parameter, that is Q, is equal to number of stator slots divided by number of poles times number of phases, right? M is number of phases, and P is number of Poles. So I calculated this parameter here. You can see the value of Q. 
number of slots per poll per phase, right? So if I click on this, you can see number of stator slots divided by three. This is a three phase induction motor times number of poles. And also we have another parameter that is a stator slot pitch angle alpha u that is equal to two pi divided by n s, right? A stator slot pitch angle, I calculated alpha s here. A state or a slot pitch angle here in radium. So this is definition of the distribution factor KD1. This is for fundamental harmonic. For higher harmonics, you can use the same equation. If you look at this vector diagram, in this case, we have five coils in this phase, right? Five coils in this uh, phase, and we have UV1, UV2, UV3, UV4, and UV5. Okay, so distribution factor is defined as the vector summation divided by the scalar summation, right? U1, capital U1, shows this vector. As you can see here, this vector, this vector, this is the vector summation of all of these vectors. And a scalar summation is equal to Q times UV1, right? Because the amplitude of all of these vectors are the same, we can simply write Q times UV1. So Q is number of stator slots per phase per pole in a phase zone. And this is the scalar summation. This is the vector summation. So according to this uh, vector diagram, you can use geometry. This angle is the stator slot pitch angle, alpha u. And this angle is Q times alpha U divided by two. So if uh, you consider this radius R in this figure, this one. So U1, this vector is equal, the amplitude of this vector is equal two times R, right? Times sine of this angle sign of this angle and this is q times uv1 the value of uv1 is also equal to 2r times sine of the half of the stator slot pitch angle right so you can omit the r from numerator and denominator so finally, you will have this equation for the distribution factor, right? This is for fundamental harmonic and for higher harmonics, we have the harmonic order in the argument of the sine function here and in the argument of the sine function here. I implemented this equation in the Excel file. If you go to the developer, Visual Basic, Electromagnetic design core. I implemented this equation here. KD, distribution factor. Right? We have three inputs Q, a stator slot pitch angle, and H. H is harmonic order. And I implemented this equation here in the macro to be able to calculate distribution factor. So I implemented this equation here, calculate KD for the fundamental harmonic. Okay, the next one is the pitch factor. You can see the definition of the pitch factor. The pitch factor is the same as distribution. So with the same logic, you can calculate the pitch factor. Here we have, for example, one 
coil and as you know in each coil we have two coil arms arm number one and arm number seven this is a two pole machine so instead of full pitch winding you can reduce the angle so you can do short pitching to reduce the harmonics in the induced voltage so the pitch factor is defined as the vector summation divided by the scalar summation so u total is this one this vector summation and the scalar summation is two times the slot induced voltage u slot in one or seven so again you can use the same logic and calculate the pitch factor also if you are interested you can refer to the second chapter of this reference and this is the equation of the pitch factor i implemented this equation here calculate kp pitch factor uh, we have this inputs number of stator slots poles s pan and h right s pan is defined as number of stator slots between two coil arms of the winding right so number of stator slots between two coil arms here is the coil span and in this case i set the value of number of stator slots equal to 36 and number of rotor slots equal to 26 right and i set number of layers equal to single layer this is a single layer winding not double layer winding as i explained in the previous videos this is a single layer winding so in this benchmark motor number of stator slots is equal to 36 so i wrote here also 36 for number of stator slots and number of rotor slots in the benchmark motor is 26 and i wrote 26 for nr also here in this excel file so we can calculate the value of kd kp here if you see this calculation the value of q is 3 and the coil span is 9 right because ns divided by p that is equal to 36 divided by 4 that is equal to 9 right for single layer winding we cannot do short pitching but for double layer winding you can do short pitching and you can set the value of span equal to 8 for example right i implemented this equation i wrote if the value of number of layers is equal to single layer so the value of coil span is equal ns divided by p otherwise reduce that value by one okay so one is okay and uh, for double layer windings one slot short pitching is uh, usually okay but if you want to reduce the coil span lower you can manually set this number but by default i implemented this equation it's up to you right so let's uh, set it equal to single layer and the coil span is 9 so the value of distribution factor and pitch factor are calculated here the next parameter is the sq factor so when we sq the rotor slot also we can reduce the effect of a slot harmonics a state or a slot harmonics right in this figure alpha is the sq angle and if you consider this differential elements and use 
the same logic that is presented here for distribution factor, you can derive this equation, right? For details, you can refer to this reference. You can derive this equation, and this in this equation, we have m number of phases, q, and nu, that is the harmonic order, right? Nu is the harmonic order in this equation. And we have SSP, right? SSP is another way for defining the SQ angle, right? So instead of setting the SQ angle, we can set the value of SSP or the value of SSQ that I defined here, S state or S dot SQ. So when you set SSQ equal to one, the SQ angle is equal to alpha S, a state or a start pitch angle, right? So I changed the definition. This definition is more common. Actually, you can write SQ angle equal to SSQ times the alpha S, right? This is SQ angle. This is a state of a slot pitch angle and this is SSQ. So, right, when we set SSQ equal to 1, SQ angle is equal to 1 state or a slot pitch angle. If you set the value of SSQ equal to 0.5, it means the SQ angle is equal to half of the state or a slot pitch angle. So, I set this value equal to 1 because if you look at the benchmark motor, here you can see the top view of the rotor and the SQ angle is equal to one state or a slot pitch angle, this angle. So I set this value equal to one and when you set this number also you can calculate the SQ factor. Right, I implemented the equation for calculation of the SQ factor here in this macro and I used this function here. So the winding factor for the fundamental harmonic is multiplication of these three factors and it's equal to 0.98 for this number of stator slots and this number of poles. Also here I calculated the distribution pitch factor and sq factor for higher harmonics that i will explain this worksheet later so in this way we can calculate the winding factor the winding factor is a function of number of stator slots and number of poles so you can calculate this and use it in later calculations. So if we use this equation, if we use this equation and replace it in this equation instead of E phase, right? We will have this equation. The input volt ampere, the input KVA is equal to three times the phase back EMF, this expression divided by gamma EMF times the phase current. So we have two important definitions here, magnetic loading and electric loading. We have these two definitions for all motor types and the definition of the magnetic loading and electric loading depends on the motor structure, right? So in case of the radial flux, machines the magnetic loading is defined as total available flux total available magnetic flux in the middle of air gap divided by the air gap surface or the contact area between the rotor and a stator right here if you look at this figure this surface shows the contact area between the rotor and a stator, right? The electromagnetic energy conversion occurs on this surface, right? 
So this surface is important and we define the magnetic loading like this. Total available magnetic flux in the middle of air gap divided by the contact area between the rotor and the stator. This is general definition. For axial flux motor, this definition could be different, right? And the electric loading is defined as total available ampere conductor, right? Divided by perimeter of the air gap. So pi d is the perimeter of the air gap. And this is the total ampere turn generated by the stator winding. We have a three phase winding. And in each winding, we have number of coils per phase. We have this number of coils. In each coil, we have two turn. In each, excuse me, in each coil, we have two arms. In each arm, we have NTC number of turns per coil, and this is the coil current. So this is the total ampere turn available on the stator winding. So this is definition of the electric loading. And if you use these two definitions and replace these two definitions in this equation, you can derive this equation, right? I replace the, those definitions and finally we will have this equation. The output power is equal to the output constant times D2L rotor volume times RPS. RPS is revolutions per second. Okay, so this is the output equation of the motor. And the output coefficient is equal to this expression, right? In this expression, we have the value of kW. We specify the value of gamma EMF. This is magnetic loading, electric loading, desired efficiency, and desired power factor. So you should set the value of magnetic loading and electric loading here. The value of magnetic loading, 0.43, and the value of electric loading. In this equation, output power is in kilowatt and magnetic loading is in tesla. Electric loading is in kiloampere per meter. Here, kiloampere per meter. I wrote proper units in the Excel file also. So, when you specify the value of magnetic loading and electric loading, you can calculate g and when you have the value of g you can start to calculate main dimensions of the motor right so let's pause here and in the next video i will explain some rules for setting the value of magnetic loading and electric loading and then we will continue calculation of the main dimensions of the motor. Thanks for watching.